black people. It's all about the unity. There's nothing they can do with us, so ain't nobody who... We are in a state of emergency. Prejudice. Wrote a song about it? Like to hear it? Here it go. Free your mind. To boldly go where no man has gone before. Emergency. Prejudice. Wrote a song about it? Like to hear it? Here it go. Free your mind. To the to the to the, to the master speaker, brother Muhammad. Go ahead, brother Muhammad. That fire, that flame rolling. Uh, thank you, dear brother. Thank you, uh, and I want to thank all of this our, our family members that spoke before me, um, Elder Omar. That was beautiful, very beautiful, um, and that's what we need. And so I, I want to say, uh, brother Talib. It is an honor to be here, to be with everybody, to speak. Um, you know, people that know our history probably would not um, imagine to see me at Soul Liberation Day, um, let alone speaking, but here I am. Um, and, you know, I salute you for that. That's, that's real leadership. That's real leadership. Um, and like I said uh, to you personally, that once we take our first city in Mississippi, and, and I am sworn in, um, we're going to have you right there with us because you need to get the honor and respect that you are due. 
since this whole idea of Mississippi, you know, it came through you. And so we're going to do what's right, regardless to whom or what. Um, when I sit back and I think about Soul Liberation Day, and a lot of the, the speakers before me talked about, you know, being enslaved and, you know, the things that we need liberation from. And um, we talked about Exodus um, and we talked about the mind, because if you're enslaved, then that tells a condition of your mind. And so in our, because we have two um, plans and the Black First plan, um, it deals only with strictly Black people, period, blank, leave it. And then even out of that, you can't be homosexual, right? So in, in our thing, we are selected. And in your plan, you're not selected, and there's nothing really wrong with that. Now, a lot of people will say, Muhammad, did you just say ain't nothing wrong with that? But you got to listen. Because from the position that Brother Talik is coming, he's looking at the humanity. And he's looking and seeing the condition of humanity and what should be done. And so one day as somebody asked me a question, does black first um, go along with Islam? And I said, no, it doesn't. Because we are strictly us. Islam deals with all of that. So when we think about Liberation Day in Exodus, Mississippi, so you're leaving a big area to go to a little area. Why? Because there's something that's going on in the big area that is against life itself. And if it wasn't get against life itself, there would no need to be an exodus. Now, when we stop and we think at some of the things that they have done, we, we understand that there's this big eviction crisis that's going on and, and going to continue to go on. And $600 is not going to solve the plan. No. But the people are suffering. And they're suffering because the people that they voted to send them somewhere to do a job on behalf of themselves are not serving the people. So if you're not serving the people, what interests are you really serving? Uh -huh. And so the people have to wake up to the reality that the people you voted for have robbed you. And they're robbing you of your life. They're robbing you of your freedom. They're robbing you of your humanity. You got to understand this. And so once you understand this, you say, oh, Exodus, I got to come out. I got to get away from these demons. Because uh -huh. you're judging now and you see this doesn't fit with what the plan that we were given the story that we were told about America, America, the great America, the beautiful. But the reality is corporations are people that that's the, that's the reality. Corporations are people. Now, brother Talek, if you or I go out and commit a crime, we going to jail. <laughs> I've been there. But but when a corporation commits a crime, even murder, they'll get charged. They'll write up the document and charge them. But nobody goes to jail. Nobody has to pay the price for life that was taken. You all remember BP when, when they had the oil spill 
and, and they were charged with manslaughter. But nobody went to jail. But yet corporations are people. And corporations give more money to these so-called <laughs> elected leaders. But a corporation, you can't send IBM to jail. But IBM got more power than you. IBM got more, got more say than you. That's a problem. That's a problem. And we got to be able to begin to understand what this problem is. And so the, the other day I was watching TV and I was just flicking through the channels to see what was on. And every channel I went to, there was either a program on somebody murdering somebody or a program on, you know, somebody killing somebody, somebody robbing somebody. It's, it's, it's just crime after crime after crime. And they put it to you in a way of, if you do it this way, then you maybe you can get away with it. So if this is what is feeding the mentality of the, of the citizens in America, murder, crime, stealing, robbing, and how to get away with it. And then they're pumping this, this, this fake fewer of you got to do this and you got to do this and, and this person against this and this person against this. And you got just chaos and mayhem running wild. And the majority of the people is sitting in front of the TV just eating it up. Eating it up. And have nowhere to turn for truth. Have nowhere to turn for honesty. Nowhere to turn for real inspiration. Well, when we understand this, that's why, dear brother, the weight of the mission, the weight of the word of Exodus, Mississippi, the weight of the word of the B1 initiative. You can't be no punk. You can't be no weak thing and carry that kind of word. Why? Because with that kind of word, you are challenging the so-called rulers that be. You are challenging the ignorant ones that just follow along and will hate you just because you want something right. Mm -hmm. And they'll tell you all day long that you're wrong. But you see something greater <laughs> than what they see. And this is what I, I tell us in, in B1. We got to think for the ignorant because they can't think for themselves. They can't think for themselves. So we have to think for them. We have to be able to plan and strategize for them. We got to be able to teach them out of the ignorance that was imposed. As Brother Omar was talking about with, with, with that cracker, Willie Lynch, there was a condition imposed upon us. And as Willie Lynch said, we need to block out all avenues where light can enter the mind of the slave. Why? Because when light enters the mind of the slave, then he gets to understand his condition and say, whoa, this ain't, this ain't for me. How are you going to rule me? We outnumber you. Let's kill it. Let's get rid of it. So they wanted to block us off from knowledge, from wisdom, and from the understanding of the time and what must be done. Not what should be done, what, not what maybe be done, but what must be done. Because there's a day coming. There's a day coming. And if you're not ready for when that day gets here, you're not prepared, you don't have the safety things set up, then you're going to be out to the slaughter. So you got to be strong. Now, there's a saying that says, your behavior 
or your appetite will be a reflection of your freedom. It will be a reflection of your freedom. What is the behavior of not just black people, but what is the behavior of the American populace? Is it a behavior that really reflects freedom? No, it's not a behavior that really reflects freedom when you have children going to school and graduating and can't even read their high school diploma. Wow. That's that's not freedom. That's not that's a slave that you done made that can only work minimum wage jobs at best. Mm. Then where you have it with an economic system that's changing. And so you had the one candidate, uh, I think his name was Yang, was talking about, we need to give all the American citizens a thousand dollar stimulus or a thousand dollar check to go along with what you make. Why? Manufacturing is gone. Automation is coming in. Mm-hmm. So what are you going to do? How are you? How is the regular everyday person that's working these teller jobs? How are they going to be able to feed their family when it deals with the companies can say, well, hell, I can put a, a machine there and lose three people off my payroll. I ain't got to worry about their health care. I ain't got to worry about no raises. I ain't got to worry about nothing. But making sure my machine is up to date. Who's going to take care of them? Because they don't have the, 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 the knowledge to work in a corporate America. They don't have the knowledge to go out and, and invent something that you can make up a manufacturing base So where and when is their help coming from? Who's going to service them? Now, these are the things that real leadership has to answer. These are the things that when you're sitting back and you're realizing what it needs to feed a people, not just some, some, some scraps here and there, But you first feed them with knowledge because you can look, you can, you can, you can get in a car, but if you don't know, if you don't know how to drive, if you don't know what the steering wheel is, just because you see it with your physical eye, doesn't mean you really see it. It doesn't mean that you know its function. You don't know its ability and what you're supposed to do with it. So if you got somebody that's been in jail for what, 20, 30, 40 years, when they went into jail, you had a a key that you can stick into the ignition. Now they got it where you just push a button and keep the key in your pocket. So they get out of jail and step in the car like that, they don't know what to do. Why? Because the mind, the knowledge is not there, even though they can physically see. They're always looking for something to fill that void so they can get that movement. Now that we have movement, the next thing is order. Because we got to have order. And without order, you have what? You have chaos. Uh-huh. So you got we got to figure out not only the employment, but how to feed, how to grow food. Mississippi, some people say when, when, when they first heard about Mississippi, they say, well, hell, you got, you got uh, a major city like Baltimore. There's more, more black people and industrious type black people in Baltimore. Why don't, you, why don't you shoot for there? You ain't growing no food in Baltimore. You ain't growing no food. And then you got too much back and forth. Because you got to be able to prepare and prepare for the day of of onslaught. Because there will be a race war. Ain't no ifs, ands, and buts about it. Every time they kill us, what is that thing they're saying? 
because they want to go ahead and do what? They want to go ahead and start the race war. How are you going to fight a race war and you ain't got no hospitals? Where are you going to go? Go right back to the enemy's hospital? And you think this is the way we're going to win? We got to mature now and understand that we are on deck. We are on deck. So we can't go back and complain about what Martin did. Or we can't talk, keep talking about what Malcolm did. We can't keep talking about what uh, Marcus Garvey did. Mm -hmm. Now, we've been taught, right? What is the evidence of the teaching? What is the evidence that we've been taught, right? The evidence is that we take that knowledge and put it to use, put it to an exchange, and produce a product. And without a product, you can't say that you've really been educated. Without a product, you can't say that you really got a master plan. Not without a product. So we got to do what we got to do. We got to take Mississippi. We got to take Mississippi. It ain't a joke. It ain't a pastime. This is real life. I, I listened to our sister Noble as she was opening up and she was expressing the reality that she sees. Now, I don't see the reality like that. But I can tell you, Sister Noble, that we work every day, every day, to construct a reality based on freedom, justice, and equality for our people so that they can understand the time and what must be done and break away from that, that slave-making religion. Because that is the one of the most damnable things that the enemy give you their religion, give you them to worship them as God. And you sitting around, walking around, talking about, well, I'm going to get mine in the by and by. Ain't no goddamn by and by. You're going to get it right here or you ain't going to never have it. That's the way it got to be. You got to have the actual facts. And anything less is just not going to work today. No more smoking mirrors. No more playing nice. This is wartime. And we got to do what's necessary. And if we don't do it, then what? Then what you were saying is untruthful. Now, we all know, and I'm going to rush this up, but we all know the nation of Islam teaches that God came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, July 4th, 1930. Now, this is over 80 years ago. We're over 80 years. What is the movement of our people? Or better yet, we what is the movement? of the nation of Islam, all right? We gotta be critical. I'm not jamming nobody, but we gotta, we gotta analyze where we are. Because if we say God came in the person of this man in 1930, and we in 2020, and we still begging the same cracker, we're still dealing with the same situation. Then we got to under ask ourselves, did he come? And have we done by the information that he gave? Did we do right? We got to be able to ask these questions. And in truth, in truth, we did not do right. Because Operation Exodus or B1 Mississippi should have already been done. Yes, that's right. It should have already be done, been done. But it hasn't. Why? Why has what has stopped you from the movement? Because you have gotten comfortable. 
Mm. The lessons say Master Farad Muhammad saw himself pushing the Fords and the DuPonts and the Rockefellers in a lake of fire. And the believer will sit back and say, well, I'm going to wait to see Master Farad Muhammad do the pushing. And I can cheer him on doing the pushing. And you still suffering. So you misunderstand the teaching. The teaching is not for you to wait for somebody else to come and do it. The teaching is for you to get out there and do it. Right. And by you doing it, then you see Master Farad Muhammad doing it. By you taking, Brother Talik, by you taking on the exodus and moving forward, that's the work of liberation. That's the work of killing the nigga. That's the work of, of making them free. That's the living embodiment of the teachings of Master Farad Muhammad, if God came in his person. And I believe he did. And that's why we are not waiting for to see nobody push. We're out there pushing. But there's a problem with our people. We suffer from anxiety, worry. What the white man going to say? What the white man going to do if you're talking about going to Mississippi? That white man ain't going to let you. Right. But goddamn, coward. Why you always want to put everything on what the white man going to let you do? Are you a man or are you a faggot? Mm. We got to just be real. Cracker ain't going to stop you. But if you want to suffer anxiety if you want to always be a slave then you'll have no movement so i'm going to say dear brother i thank you for having the vision having the forethought and having the courage because even when you sent me your email it wasn't like we were on best buddy terms <laughs> and you send it anyway and when <laughs> i read it i said excellent yes sir Bruh. Let's do it. Why? Why? Because I knew it was right. I knew it was right. And so that made an obligation on me to pick up and do. And I thank you, dear brother, and I thank you that you're taking your obligation and you're bringing it forward and you have not given in. You have not let discouragement stop you from doing and growing into the position and into the person, the man that you're growing into becoming. And because we're all still growing yeah. into that role that we should be doing. So I thank you and I salute you. And I turn the mic over to you, big brother. Free your mind. Person meets a white person and suddenly their life is better. A poor black person meets a white person and now they can get their shit together. White people to the rescue. What would we do without you? You make all our dreams come true. White people to the rescue. Poor black boys are really good at sports, but only when a white coach tells them. Poor black boys would just do what destroys till a white coach comes along to help them. White people to the rescue. What would we do without you? You make all our dreams come true. White people to the rescue. Whether we want to dance or sing or simply just survive, we only need some white people and we will truly thrive. Poor black lasses would fail all their classes till a white teacher stops to teach them. Poor black lasses would shake and pump their asses till a white teacher tries to reach them. Poor black orphans would live off their endorphins. Not much else rhymes with orphans. White people to the rescue. What would we do without you? You make all our dreams come true. White people to the rescue. White people to the rescue. What would we do without you? White people to the rescue. 
what would we do without you?